live is in my garden and like I said it's um late September and I usually clean it up after I harvest the milkweed. So I have a lot growing here. Well I think and I've been raising the butterflies from it all year. And so you kind of identify it sort of crosswise. The plants grow two leaf, two leaf, two leaf. And also you identify it by the seed pods in the fall. And I'm gonna check the seed pods. I just kind of split it open. And that's what I want. Well, this is sort of in between because you can see some pink ones there and then some dark brown. And when they're all dark brown, then they're ready to be harvested. And I send those um, to open lands or to other places that want to propagate milkweed to help us uh, keep our pollinators happy. But we share these plants. Um, they are the... Um, host plant for monarch butterflies. That's the only thing no monarch butterfly caterpillars eat. I don't know if you can stick your camera in there. But this is the chrysalis. The caterpillar lays its eggs on the plant. It eats and eats and eats until it gets to be a great big caterpillar. And then they turn into this and in about two weeks there'll be butterflies. And so all summer, um, the monarchs need it. And then when you harvest, wherever you harvest, whether it's your yard, uh, side of the road, a uh, vacant lot, um, you always leave a few. You participate in the honorable harvest. You leave some for the animals that we share the plants with. And uh, in the late winter, early spring, this is a kind of beat up example but this gray fiber, just like that paper was gray, is an oriole's nest. And it hangs like a teardrop and there's a little doorway. And then they have, uh, like, these look like pine cones or grasses inside. But it's a beautiful, beautiful nest woven out of milkweed fiber. And when I took some out of the back, it kind of goes in an L shape here. And it is, um, cutting it down won't hurt it. It's a taproot that grows underneath the ground. And so it'll come back every year, but not in the, uh, not in this exact same place. And it walks out into the middle of the, I guess you can call this our lawn. <laughs> and you know, I just pick the plant before uh, the grass is cut and feed butterflies with it. You can stay here and I'll go stand next to it so people can see. So it can get pretty tall too. <laughs> These are a good seven feet, I think. Harvesting at this time of year gets you great paper, but it's a little messy because the plants have a lot of sap, so get an old shirt, even if it's hot like today. And these are my ratty old harvest gloves. And so you can use one of these if you don't want to bend over a lot, or you can use these. Any kind of uh, shears. And we're just gonna go way down in there. You got it? Ready? Mm -hmm. And just cut. And then if you're harvesting a lot of things, it kind of helps you just leave it for some of the sap to drain out. My glasses are fogging up from the mess. <laughs> My tongue. 
Well, these I think. Yeah, I think we looked at those and they needed, yeah, they, that needs a little extra time. You can see the parts that are kind of square and stiff. And then up towards the top, it gets a little limper and that's not going to give you any fiber. So you can tuck there. And then the seeds are real, or the leaves are real easy to get off. Just kind of Where those gloves really come in handy, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> and the big shirt that can get all the stamp on it. It's a messy process. And again, if you're harvesting a lot, you know, you usually have like a full half hour or so for the some of the sap to drain out. But there's gonna be a lot no matter what. So again, at the top, that flexible top we don't need. This is falling off. And then it's also a good, you know, if you got a lot, you can do it really fast, just kind of run your hand down and strip. But if you have time, you can check for uh, monarch chrysalises and things that you might not want to uh, get rid of. Just keep cutting. Until you have a whole pot full. Once you have your pot full, if you have a bunch of them, you don't have enough to, uh, like if I'm going to put the top on these and they're very tall, I'll, I'll tie a string around them so that they just stand up. I steam it on high for at least two hours, maybe three, depending on how much I've got. You can see it changes color like any vegetable. It's just, at this point, it should very easily, I steamed these this morning, and it just comes off in one strip. This is your fiber, and this is the stuff you just throw away, and or you can dry it out and, you know, burn it in a fire pit <laughs> for our COVID-19 meetings. <laughs> You know, I was like, describing this to all the kids that have fun and and different stuff. So, if you harvest in, um, oh, late November, early December, the stem is going to be hollow. Uh, this one doesn't have much color, but they have that kind of gray. You don't have to do that step. All you have to do with this is, oh, that one's still a little wet, unfortunately. Step on it. Ah, yeah, and peel the inside out. And that's the same as the um, fiber that we didn't clean. 
and it's harvested and harvested now, but this is how to do it later. And it's a little easier when it is actually November. <laughs> fiber that I showed you earlier, that white paper. I have a knife that's not too uh, sharp and uh, just a piece of wood with a little bit of foam or rubber on it. And I take one of those strips of fiber. I just clean off that outer Um, casing. It's kind of like plastic on the milkweed. It's really strange. And that's what gives you all the little color in the tan sort of paper. And without it, it will be pretty white. So that's clean. It's hard to see but it's a shiny kind of, it's like plastic. But that will make the white fiber, this is all pure fiber now. And you can actually see it when I peel it. All those tiny fine fibers in there. And that's what's going to make your paper. So again, you just take, take a, after you strip it and keep it wet. This one's going to be harder because it's got lots of branches on it. But just scrape off. An outer covering. And this is kind of masochistic. <laughs> But you gotta really want to white want that white paper to do this. It's a lot easier on other fibers, other plants to clean. But the result is so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs>